This will be a quick uh, overview slash tutorial how to create a simple handle um, using FreeCAD and then slicing it using Prusa Slicer. Um, so let's get at it. Well, first up, you have to have uh, FreeCAD uh, installed. Once it's installed, uh, click on the icon on your desktop and launch it. Looks something like this. Um, you can see that uh, you want to start by uh, creating a part. And then once you create a part, click on uh, the new uh, Create New. You can also do File New, but just click this icon here and Create New. Now you get all these new icons up there. Let's get a box down there. So you click the box and by default it comes up to be 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter. Let's change it. So let's make the length uh, oh, 60 or so, and let's make the width 20 or so, <clears throat> and make the height a little bit uh, smaller. Um, now we want to view the whole thing. It puts it in a perspective. You can turn it by um, left-clicking your mouse and holding it, and you can rotate uh, the object. Now let's put the spindle in the middle of the handle. So let's create a cylinder. And let's move it. Um, let's rotate so we can see things. Now let's move it by going to placement and then position in the XY um, location <clears throat> about in the middle. This is just a quick demo. Then move it in the Y direction a certain amount. Sorry to get in the middle. Now we're not going to want to have this spindle sitting on the bottom plane. <clears throat> we want to sort of embed it inside the cube a little bit. So to do that, let's rotate it a little bit. And you can see it's right at the bottom. And that'll create a, a little marring mark on your print when you print it. So let's move it up a millimeter. Now you won't see that little mark. <clears throat> let's make it bigger. Everything's in radius, not diameter. So that'll be the first mistake you probably make. Let's make it a little bit longer. And now let's, uh, let's um, right click and hold your, I think it's the Alt signal or Alt key down. And that'll mark these corners. And you'll see what I'm going to do. Mark the four corners, and then click on the fillet. And uh, let's make it about five millimeters. If you make it too big, it won't do anything. It'll, it'll scream at you. So five should be good. Click OK. And it makes a nice rounded corner. So now we want to take and uh, save this. <clears throat> so let's save um, the project so that we want to come back and make some modifications we can. Put in the folder where you want to put it. In this case, it's um, on my network drive. And I'm going to create a new folder called Test Free CAD. Open the folder and then call the project what it is. Test Free CAD. Save it. And now we've got two items, and we want to print them as one. So let's fuse them together, make a union. That's a Boolean. That's a union. <clears throat> now creates <clears throat> a fusion. Let's recall it, call it something else. Hit the F2 key, and you can uh, call it anything you want. We're going to call it a handle. Save, it, save the project again. And now we want to export handle as an STL file. So let's make sure it's in the right directory, and then you hit save. We're pretty much done with FreeCAD. <clears throat> now let's launch uh, Prusa Slicer. You can download it uh, for free. And once you launch uh, Prusa Slicer, um, you're ending up with a blank slate. You want to click on the uh, plus icon there to add an object. And let's go add our object that we just created, the STL file. 
down there in the test free CAD folder. Should have called it something alphabetical at the top so I don't have to scroll. And just open it. And it, it's placed on the platter. And um, it's flat. And now let's uh, just say you want to rotate it. <clears throat> so let's rotate it. So now it's sitting on the spindle. And that's not going to print real well. Um, you're going to have to have supports. <laughs> um, printer's not going to make anything really pretty there. So you can add a support uh, with Prusa Slicer. You can paint them on. Um, and by painting them on, you just take your cursor and press the left key and paint. Um, that's one way to do it. It's tedious. Um, I won't get into organic supports or anything like that. That's really new. <clears throat> As you get more <coughs> familiar with the tool, you can start using supports differently. <coughs> creates a much cleaner print. And that is um, the smart fill, and that's probably what you'd end up using to start with. And so now when this prints, um, it's going to have supports all under that area. Supports are really hard to get off a of print most of the time, and it makes a mess. So you try not to use supports unless you really have to. But let's slice this. And I have a, this is a three color printer, so I have to tell it what extruder it has to use. Let me use the red extruder. It's got a red plastic in it. And um, I'm going to tell it to slice. And eventually it'll say it's sliced. Now, um, now that's my G code for the slice and exported exporting is finished. So now <clears throat> let's bring up that now this is the actual G code um, that Prusa Slicer created and Prusa Slicer adds a lot of crap in it <clears throat> that you don't need and sometimes it confuses some 3D printers mine it confuses it, does, it doesn't do a bad job it just stalls the printer every once in a while uh, it continues to print but I don't like it to stall because it'll leave little marring marks on what you're printing so what I do is I go in and I remove all that crap and it's basically comments and you'll see see all that white space and then there's comments in there I delete all that stuff and I have a macro built into uh, notepad plus that automatically does it for me. So now they're all gone. You save it. And now let's uh, go take a look at this with the Prusa Slicer viewer. We're going to go to File and um, basically uh, view the G code. And that's what I just edited. And it's in the folder. You say OK. It was on another screen, so I had to drag it over. <clears throat> and you can see I can pull down, and this is the layers that it is showing you. And it's very useful to figure out whether you're going to get a nice print or not. Now let's take and um, uh, flip this handle over and make it more difficult to print. <clears throat> And this is actually the, the sliced view. You have to look at the placement view to do this. So let's flip it over. And we're going to set it on the spindle. <clears throat> and so now it's got all that airspace underneath there that the <clears throat> 3D printer is not going to do a very good job at. So you've got to take and put a smart fill underneath there. And that's what I'm going to end up doing. Put a smart fill. Well, you can do this if you want. That's really tedious. Um... 
I'm going to show you how to do this. And now we're going to slice it. And it'll come back and say, okay, now this is what it's going to look like. It's going to have all that green area. It's, it's going to be plastic that's going to be stuck to the plate and stuck to your object loosely. It comes off, but every place that the support was, there's a little bit of a mar. So if you're trying to get a nice, clean-looking plastic print, it's not going to look so good. And we can look at it with the viewer, <clears throat> and it looks the same. But the viewer is very useful. Um, you can see all the layers that got printed. You can actually view the speed that the layer is printing at, the density. Um, it's up there in the upper left-hand corner, all those icons. That's what they mean. Um, so now let's, uh, let's take and put this on its side, which would be... You know, you run into this every once in a while. You got to print something. It's gonna, I got this thing hanging off to the side, and it's going to look really bad. But I got to do this. So let's uh, put it on its side, and we're going to do a um, smart fill um, painting, a support on this one. So go to smart fill, rotate it a little bit, get rid of all that crap, rotate it, and then just highlight that. Now it's going to paint the whole thing. <clears throat> You can do that, or you can do um, Smart Fill. Let's do Smart Fill. And bingo. It's, the whole thing's blue now, so that whole area is going to be supported. The top won't be, but you'll see. So let's slice it. Let's move it a little bit. Let's slice it now. And you can see it's supported. Make a nice print. And you'll notice the, the last two G-codes that I generated, I didn't go in and edit because this is just trying to speed this up a little bit. <clears throat> but if I was going to send this to my printer now, I would definitely um, delete those files. Uh, not the files, but the, the comments and stuff. And that's uh, pretty much it. Um, you're done with uh, FreeCAD. I mean, you're done with and just created the G-code files so you can print them on your 3D printer. Thanks for watching.